In this video, I'm going to talk about strategies for showing conjunctions. So as with the showing conditionals and showing negations, in a way, there's nothing really novel here. If you want to show a conjunction, box and circle, then you get box, you get circle, you apply a join to get the conjunction, and you apply dd. So that's nothing new, but uh, what we need to think about if you want to sh if you want to get circle, if you want to show the conjunction, is how to get box and circle. So let's look at some derivations where I show you a couple of different ways to think about getting box and circle and a subderivation strategy that's relevant to doing that. So we're going to start with about as simple a derivation involving conjunction as you could get, where the conclusion is just p into q. So we'll pop in our two premises. We don't need to make an indirect assumption, and in a way it would be distracting, so we're not going to. We don't need to make an indirect assumption because we can just put 2 and 3 together, 2 and 3 adjoin. And that's our conclusion, right? So how do you get a conjunction? You build the conjunction using uh, adjunction from its conjuncts. Okay, good. Now in that case, it was straightforward. We were just given the conjuncts. But uh, sometimes we're not given the conjuncts, and so it's more involved. So here, uh, the conclusion is Q and W. And we have a bunch of premises, four premises. But none of them in include Q and W. But that's okay. We can get Q and W because 2 and 3 modus ponens gives us Q. 4 and 5 modus ponens gives us W. And we can put them together. And we get our conclusion. So again, we see our conclusion is a conjunction. We think, okay, I want to build the conjunction. Stick in my premises and see if I can build the conjunction. And in both of these two cases, we were able to. And we didn't even have to make an indirect assumption. But again, the, see, the point is we're trying... The, the point fundamentally here is in both of these cases, we want to build the con we get to the conjuncts and then build the conjunction. But sometimes uh, it's more uh, getting to the conjuncts is more involved than, than what we saw in the last two problems. So again, here we have this uh, we're trying to show a conjunction, but this time it's a conjunction where the conjuncts themselves are complex. So here this is a disjunction and that's a disjunction. So we're going to have to get disjunctions and then put them together. So we can say 2, 3 modus ponens again, 4, 5 modus ponens again, oops, not 45, but 4, 5 modus ponens. And now, okay, well we need Q or R, and we can get Q or R from Q by using the rule add. We'll add, uh, on the right we want to add R to Q, and uh, we want to get W or T, so we want to add T on the right to W on line 7, so we're going to add on the right uh, T. And now again we have the two conjuncts, and we can put them together. And we can say direct derivation. So the issue with uh, when your conclusion is a conjunction is, okay, I, I know I want to get the conjuncts and then uh, adjoin them, how am I going to get the conjuncts? And as we've seen, it might be you're just given the conjuncts, or it might be you can just put in your premises and apply elimination rules, or it might be more complicated here where you have to do some, uh, not just the elimination rules like modus ponens, but where you have to build bigger sentences using uh, introduction rules like addition. Okay, that's fine. Now, but let's look at a, a, a more difficult, uh, a, another situation that can arise. So here, okay, Again, we're trying to show a conjunction. What are the conjuncts? Well, one is this conditional W, then Z. The other is a conditional if P, then Q. All right, so let's put in our two premises. Well, those are the two premises, and we're kind of stuck. Now, uh, right, because we can't do MTP or MP or MT with any of those. Now, you might think, oh, well, maybe an indirect assumption would help. But what are you going to do with this? This is the negation of a conjunction. What are you going to do with that? I'm actually going to talk about what you might do with the negation of a conjunction later, but what I w am going to talk about wouldn't help you in this situation. So, what are we going to do at this point? Well, our general strategy is, okay, I, I'm trying to show a conjunction, so I want to get the conjuncts. Sometimes I have the conjuncts already. That's nice. Sometimes I can get them just using elimination rules. Sometimes I also need to use introduction rules. We're not in any of those situations at this point, though. We're in the situation where... Our rules aren't going to help us. 
So that means we need to do a subderivation. In fact, we need, we're going to need to do two subderivations. And we want to use this subderivation command show conj. So you, show conj says if you're trying to show a conditional, I will enter one of the conjuncts for you. So we're going to do this. We're going to get the left conjunct, which is if p then q, right? That's, that's this part. Now we also need to get w then z. So we're going to do this again. We're going to say show w then z. And then we're going to put these two together with the join, as we have been doing, and that's our direct derivation. Of course, we have to do these subderivations. But the point is, we're trying to get a conjunction, so we want to get the conjuncts to use a junction. How are we going to get the conjuncts? Well, we're going to show them. So let's go back to this subderivation. If p then q, let's see if we can do this. Now, we can follow this show con strategy and just repeat the show consequent out uh, as much as possible. In this case, it's unnecessary, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt us. So now let's see. What do we want to do? Well, we can do MTP with not Q and not P or Q, right? Because uh, 2 is not P or Q. Negation Q is the, right, is the negation of the right disjunct, so that's 2, 7, MTP. So we have not p. Well, at this point, we're working in inside of an, an indirect derivation with an indirect assumption, so we want to see if we can find a contradiction. And if we look, we have p on line 5, so we'll bring that down, and we have our contradiction. 6 is the consequent of line 4, so cd. Now, we didn't need to do show q. We could have done uh, dn. We could have... Well, we didn't need to. We could have got used just p, but it's fine. It's no problem. Show q wasn't a problem, even though it was unnecessary. And now what have we gotten to? Let's step back now that we've completed this subderivation and take a look. We got if p then q, that's the left conjunct. What do we want to do? We want to get the right conjunct now. So now we're going to say show if w then z. Oh, but let's um let's use the show conj command again. And this time we'll select if w then z. Again, we'll make an indirect assumption. We can go ahead and do our show consequent command. Again, this is here it's unnecessary, but it's not going to hurt. We get not z. Can we use w or not z? Well, we can actually use either of them uh, more or less directly with line 3. In particular, uh, not z is the antecedent of line 3, so we can say 315 mp, which gives us not w. Okay, can we do anything with not w? Well, we're inside of an indirect derivation because we made an assumption, so we're probably going to box and cancel by applying id. And in fact, if we look at line 13, we see that that contradicts line 16, so we have an indirect derivation of, of z. Now that we have z, well, z is the consequent of line uh, 12, so we can apply cd to line 14, and that will box and cancel line 12. Now we have both of the conjuncts, so let's put them together, 4, 12, adjoin, and that's a direct derivation. So, when you're trying to show a conjunction, you want to get both the conjuncts. Sometimes that requires doing subderivations of one or both of them. And in fact, it's never going to hurt to do subderivations of each one of them using show conj. Just as show consequent might sometimes make the derivation bigger than it needs to be, using this show conj might make the, might make the subderivation bigger than it needs to be. But that's okay. It's never going to be bigger in a in in a way that's going to stop the derivation from working. It's always just going to give you stuff, just more material going in the right direction. Okay, so if you're trying to show a conjunction. You don't always have a box and circle. You don't always have to do a subderivation of each of the conjuncts, but it's never going to hurt. So if you want to show box and circle, you want to show the conjunct, conjunct circle, and you want to show the conjunct square, and probably you want to do them each as subderivations. Not necessarily, but it's never going to hurt.